Now, a lot of you guys have been asking for this, and your boy, Nesto, he came in on more than one front. This is about to make... I imagine it's about to make a lot of you guys very happy, so make sure to stick around for a bit. There's a little, uh, little surprise for a lot of you guys that have asked this question in the past. And make sure to go down and click the like button to let Nesto know, hey, thanks. Thanks for helping out and get subscribed to the channel, because we've got a lot, we got a lot of good stuff coming. Thank you to World of Warships for sponsoring today's video. World of Warships is a team-based sea battle game that requires different strategies and tactics. World of Warships features over 400 historical ships that you can control on beautiful maps and unique living landscapes. And as somebody that plays the game daily, I can tell you that the graphics are actually pretty stunning and the weather changes as the battle intensifies. With more than 44 million players, five different ships, including destroyers, battleships, cruisers, aircraft carriers, and submarines, there's always something new to do. And that's not even mentioning the special events. Imagine playing World of Warships with Godzilla as the commander of your ship, or Kong, for that matter. Again, as somebody that plays World of Warships, I can tell you that the game is definitely worth checking out. And if you use my code, you're going to get extra perks that I didn't get when I started. So when you register for World of Warships, make sure to use my code BOOM to get 200 free doubloons, 2 free ships, 20 restless fire camouflages, 2.5 million credits, and 7 days of premium access. So check the link in the description below, and I'll see you out there. So for a bit of context, for anybody that might be new around here, there's a little series on the channel where you guys out there kind of design what you think is the coolest or best or funniest fan in the whole entire world. You send it to me, and then I print it out, we test it, and we make a little competition about it. So it's a lot of fun. Well, in season three, episode three, a viewer named Nesto went um, all in. Not only did he make like a fan for the A12X25, he also made an intake and an exhaust portion, and he called this contraption the cheater for obvious reasons. Well, this thing did really, really good, and it placed Nesto in first place. He's currently sitting first place on season three of the cooling competition or the fan showdown. Now fast forward to recently, we did a video about the T30 from Fantex, and this thing did really good. We put it up against a lot of other, you know, top tier fans, the A12X25, the Nidex, Nidex Servo, Gentle Typhoon, you know, a lot of the other ones that you think of when you think of a performance fan, and this fan, it did the best. And as soon as that video went live, a lot of you guys out there are like, make the T30 into the cheater. Well, today we're going to. Now the first thing we need to do is take the T30 and remove the blades. Now the A12X25 has this little metal hub underneath the LCP fan disc, which makes it really easy to modify it. You just cut it all off and you're ready to go. But I don't think that the T30 is made the exact same way. I guess we could tear it apart to find out, but I don't think it is. So we're gonna take a different approach. You might remember this from when we did the GPU modifications, but the first step is to cut the blades off. And I use a simple Dremel with a cutting disc. And the good thing I found about LCP is that it's easy to cut without you know, wanting to melt right away and it, it breaks pretty cleanly. What I did was cut down as far as I could and then I used a pair of needle nose pliers to just kind of break off each blade, you know, as short as I possibly could. I then went back with a flush cutter and tried to cut the blades down, you know, even further. Try to make them as smooth as possible. Now, using a flush cutter won't get you, you know, a perfectly smooth surface, but you just kind of want to remove as much as you can to make the next step a little easier. Now, also, make sure to wear some safety glasses because as soon as you clip this, this LCP, it just, Pew, gone. Now after that was done, I grabbed myself some 120 grit sandpaper, cut a little bit of a strip out of it, and then folded it over. This is like the easiest part. You just turn the fan, well I turn the fan to its advanced setting so it spin at the fastest possible RPM. I just rubbed the sandpaper on the side of the hub until it was nice and smooth. And after I was happy with the, the finish, I measured the hub and ran into a wee bit of a problem. Now, although I have the models that Nesto originally sent me for the A12X25, I don't have the models in their original formats. I only have, you know, step files, or not even step files. I only have STL files. And those don't really work too good when you want to, you know, change things, because the hub of the A12, A12X25 is quite a bit smaller than what we're going to be working with on the T30. Now, worst case scenario is I could measure it and then redraw it, which is not a huge deal. It just takes a little bit of time, but I didn't have to... I didn't end up having to do that. Also, I should mention that a lot of you guys have asked me throughout the Fan Showdown series to, re to release the fans that I feature on it, and I never have, and the reason behind that is really the fans aren't really mine to release. And you might be like, well, they're just 3D printed models, or 3D printable models, what's, what's the big deal? And I, yeah, that's true. However, back in Season 1, Episode 5, if you remember, there was a viewer named Thomas who sent in a fan called the Acceleron. And if you haven't seen season one, spoilers, the Acceleron ended up winning season one. And what you, what some of you might not remember or not, might not even know is that after that episode went live, 
I had a pre-built PC company reach out to me asking if I would be interested in you know, licensing that design for the Acceleron because they actually wanted to take that fan and hopefully turn it into an actual product to put inside their you know, pre-built PCs. Problem was is the Acceleron wasn't really mine to, to, you know, to, to license. So I told them that I would try to get in touch with the original designer and if I could, I would pass along their emails and try to get them to in touch. And I used to get updates every now and then from time to time from the, the company about how, what was going on, but I haven't heard from them in a long time. So just like you, I'm not really sure what whatever happened to that. I don't know if we're gonna see a product eventually or if it kinda went through some trials and just never panned out. I don't know. Hopefully one day we'll find out. But because of that, um, I don't release your guys' models. I want, now it, it's just for the fact that in case that ever happens again, if somebody out there designs something that absolutely blows minds and gets the attention of a company, I want you to be able to take your design and um, you know license it or market it the way you see fit. But Nesto reached out and he said that he was happy to share his models for you know the cheater. And a lot of you guys have asked for the models for the cheater. Well, good news, Nesto says, you know what? Here they are. So he put them on his Thingiverse account, which I'll link in the description below so you guys can go there and print them out. I will, <laughs> you should know one thing about all these fan models. When I originally made the drawings that kind of listed the critical dimensions, the hub, you know, the hub size, the hub diameter that I chose or that I gave for the, the fan disc that you guys all make to is slightly smaller than the actual hub on the A12X25. And the reason behind that was I figured that at the time, if I gave you the same, if I gave you the perfect fitment it might vary between people sending it in. So I've undersized it because it's always easier to take you know, a hole and make it bigger rather than you know, make it smaller. Now going back to the T30, while I was you know, talking with Nesto about releasing his models, I asked him if he had the original format for you know, his design here and he did, but the problem was it wasn't in a format that I could actually use. He could have changed it to a step file, but you know, it just would have been tricky. But he did say if I gave him the dimensions for the new T30 that he would modify it and send it over. And that's what he did. When I was finished with the, the T30 you know, modification, removing the blades, the hub diameter was about 46.5 millimeters and it was around 18 millimeters tall. And I, I sent those numbers to Nesto and he sent back a new hub and new blades. And I'll have to say, it fit together perfectly. He did a good job. As you can see, the, the hubs are a, a little larger. Blades are a little shorter, but the idea stays the same. And if you're really lucky, maybe Nesto will put this also on his Thingiverse account so you could download either one if you want to modify the, uh, the Fantex T30 or the A12X25 to make this, you could. Uh, the intake works the same for both. The, the exhaust side could use a slight modification since the, uh, the supports that hold the motor aren't exactly in the same spot as they are the A12X25, but they do, you know, they do work. So now that we have one of each, one for the T30 and one for the A12X25, we are going to test this one and see if all this added plastic makes it perform better than the original one. Well, we'll set it to the advanced mode, 3000, see how she works. And in case you're wondering, I did print this out of some new material that I received not too long ago. It's called Print Bed, made in the USA. I got an orange spool here and a green spool here. If you're interested in this stuff, I'll put a link for that. In the description as well, but it did do pretty good. I was a, I printed it a little hot. I used my standard settings, a little bit stringy, so probably need to take the temperature down a bit. But did a good job. So our test setup is the same as last time. We have this wind tunnel with a fixed internal diameter of 125 millimeters, and then we have this anemometer mounted to the back, and then there's two flow straighteners, one in the midpoint, one at the end here. We're going to measure the wind speed moving through it, and then using a little bit of math with the inside diameter, we can kind of figure out what the CFM output of both the cheater version of the T30 and the stock version of the T30 is. And we're gonna run them both maxed out, unobstructed. Then we're gonna run them both noise normalized, unobstructed. Then we're gonna add a radiator in a push configuration and run that both max and at noise normalized to kind of see if the cheater version of the T30 is better than the stock version. I will say when I was figuring out what the noise normalized RPM was, this version is louder than, uh, than the stock. But the noise level or the noise tone or the noise pitch is much lower on the cheater version than the T30 so it is louder but it's, it's a little easier to listen to. As for our max RPM since we're using a new fan obviously this time around the stock one was a maxed out RPM of 2,956. The cheater was 2,978. The noise normalized RPM of the stock and the cheater at a noise normalized level of 43.9. The T30 stock is 1,848 RPM. 
and the cheater is 1,578 RPM. And that was set at 150 millimeters from the front of each one of these fans. So let's get going. You guys want to see how this works, so we'll figure it out as we go here. We'll start with the T30, maxed out. We'll let it rev up and settle out. So it looks like it's bouncing around a little bit, but we'll call it, we'll call it 950. Now we will always normalize it, and for this fan we need to get down to 1,848 RPM. And we'll call that 670. So the numbers to beat for the T30 in the stock configuration is at max RPM, we have a CFM of 125.4, and at a noise normalized level, we have a CFM of 88.44. So let's do some swapping. All right, let's see where it takes us. Oh my gosh, we're up at like 11, 11.29. Still climbing or no? Oh, it is. Looks like it wants to stay about, a, we'll call it 1153, 11.53. That's actually quite a bit. Quite a bit quicker. 1153 unobstructed T30 cheater. So now our noise normalized level is going to be 1,578. That looks like it's settling at about 683, 686. So in the unobstructed setup, the stock T30, its CFM was 125.4, whereas the unobstructed cheater was 152.196. In the unobstructed noise normalized section here, we got the stock one at a CFM of 88.44 and the cheater at 90.552. So two for two on the cheater win in here. So let's see how it works with a, a radiator setup. So this will take a, a bit longer. So that's interesting. I just finished testing both of these fans on this radiator in the push configuration, both at max RPM and a noise normalized RPM. And how it finished, it's a little different than I expected. So we'll start with max RPM. So the CFM that the T30 was able to produce at max RPM was 121.176. The Cheetah version in the same configuration, max RPM is 126.588. So the Cheetah won that round. So that's three wins if you count the, the last two tests and this one. But things get a little different when we talk about noise normalized RPM on that same radiator. So when noise normalized, the CFM of the stock T30 is 81.972, whereas the Cheater version is 74.844. So the standard T30 actually beat the Cheater in that one, giving it, you know, one win out of four, but a win's a win. If you ain't first, you're last. Now, I'm not exactly sure why that's the case. If I was the guess, I would assume that the T30's stock blades are much better at producing, you know, static pressure than the the cheater version, plus it can spin a little faster when noise normalized, so those two things give it kind of the edge over the cheater version. But then I think as the RPM goes up, the, the efficiency of these blades kind of go down just a hair, whereas the cheater versions come up, allowing it to overtake it. But I don't know, that's a guess, could be wrong. I'd be interested to know what you think the reason behind that flip-flop on which fan was on top. So leave, leave a comment down below, because I'll be, I'll be reading, kind of see what you guys think. Also, make sure to give the video a like for for Nesto here, because he went ahead, created this cheetah version for the T30, and if you're lucky, if we're all lucky, maybe he'll put that on his Thingiverse account as well, so you can make your own A12X25 version, T30 version, because it does take the performance of the T30 in most scenarios and boost it just a hair. So I think it's pretty cool. And now everybody can make one. And I guess if you have a fan that you send in for the fan showdown and you want to make it available for everybody else, either leave a link for where it's where it is, and I'll let everybody know if you want to share it or. Tell me I can share it. I don't know. Moving forward, we'll just play by ear. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you had a good time and uh, see you next time.